Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today being Friday I wanted to do something a little fun for myself and I figured it was time to tackle batch painting again. The idea that having just a handful of miniatures in front of you and a handful of paints you can knock through them very very quickly. You'll see these four guys in front of me here, these are from Anvil Industry. Most of these parts are 3D prints but I have chosen them because there are resin versions available through their website too. So if you have a printer or if you don't you'll be able to do something similar here if you like. These guys I'm going to use for Zona Alpha, uh, they are going to be a stalker team for the contraband update which allows you to play solo or cooperatively with another player so pretty handy in the current situation. All the same the idea here is to get models on the table as easily as possible. So with just a handful of paints and a dry brush or two well that's what we've got. So all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So once our miniatures are cleaned up and assembled I've hit them with a primer of Death Guard Green. To my mind it's one of the best general purpose green primers you'll find. It works really well for any 20th century sort of military application and that's what I'm looking for here. If my guys are going to be a stalker themed team then I want them to be cruising around in mostly ex-military or refurbished gear. The trouble is that tends to be quite boring. <laughs> if you paint it accurately it's all greens and shades of brown and bleh, it's not very interesting to look at. So we are going to bend the rules a little. We figure these guys have probably been waiting for resupply <laughs> let's say. So I'm going to start off here I have XV88 which is a nice yellowy beige sort of color. I'm going to start with a medium layer brush and just apply this first of all over a couple of pairs of trousers. I'm not going to do all of them and this is really where we're going to get the uh, the random edge to this team is to slap this on a couple of them and then we'll pick one guy to paint in his hood and his shirt in this instead. So we're going to keep to a fairly narrow palette but we're going to mix up where those colors are applied to give them a little bit of individuality. So after applying that brown to two pairs of trousers and one jacket what I'm going to do is decide what to do with this guy's pair of trousers. I'm going to use Mechanicus Standard Grey here. Again fairly common sort of color that you'd find and yeah it's interesting enough. <laughs> Now for packs and such I'm using Death World Forest. I'm going to apply this first of all medium layer brush just to throw this color down on the big pack areas and then for the smaller areas like straps and such I'm going to swap to a medium layer brush. So there's the packs done and we're going to move on to the next soft detail and that's going to be any straps or other little bits of cloth which you want to stand out a little. But otherwise on any leg wraps or wrist wraps, any bits of stray cloth, Rakarth flesh will do really well. Now the fellas that have got bigger combat gloves, uh, big padded ones, I'm going to paint those in a dark grey, almost black later. Uh, but for those fellas that would otherwise have exposed hands I'm going to give them a little Katachan flesh because I'm going to paint these to look more like leather. I don't want them with exposed skin uh, if I can avoid it. As well on this fella for example I've painted his boots in brown and I did decide to break them up a little bit and add just a little bit of brown to this dude's gloves. Using the same colors you can swap up the uniform quite a lot you see. So what I'm going to move on to now that we've done all of the soft colors is a dry brush. I'm going to use Tyrant Skull and this is a Lux pencil. It's a makeup brush. Brilliant for dry brushing. Now I'm going to work this into the bristles and I'm going to get most of it off onto a bit of kitchen towel. It's important when you're dry brushing really make sure you haven't got much paint on your brush at all. Cannot stress enough. If you're worried about it prime a little black miniature off to one side and you can just test on that before you apply it to what you actually want to paint. Then once you're satisfied you have got enough off of your brush we're going to lightly start flicking Tyrant's skull over well the entire miniature. Picking out some of the edges back and forth, up and down, and we're going to add a bit of texture to all of that soft stuff. So around we go and I'm going to do this over all of the brown, the green, everything. Now you don't have to tell me, I know this looks terrible and 
This is 100% the reason why I started showing finished miniatures at the start of videos, because people would get to this stage and stop watching. But here's something to remember, and it might sound a little silly, but bear it in mind sometime. The paint job isn't finished halfway through. And I know, you know, it sounds like I'm joking, but it has helped me a few times get through stages like this. I'm going to move on to starting the hard details, so armor and equipment and things like that. For this, I've got Castellan Green, and I'm going to get into armor plates, uh, any hard bits of gear, gas mask canisters and such like that. So for example, this fella here, he is wearing a little armor plate down there. I've also used this on grenades and a few odd bits around the other miniatures. What I've got here, this is German Grey, it's a Vallejo color. You could use Corvus Black here. What I want is an off black though. Something which will take a shade and look a little more visually interesting once it's dried. So I'm going to paint in boots, any black gloves I want, and importantly, weapons. You'll see here I've gone straight over the respirator mask in its entirety, and I've done that for all of the gas capes and what have you too. What I'm going to do now is a handful of wooden details. Now, there aren't really very many of these, but they're a nice opportunity to put a little bit of warmth onto the miniature. So I'm using Mornfang Brown, and I'm going to use this for the wood on the AKs, and I'm also going to use it as another leather detail on one of the uh, melee weapons. Now one other detail that you can do on the AKs is to paint in the Bakelite magazines. Now I can't tell you how common exactly these were. But I'm using here Jokero Orange, and I'm doing this for two reasons. One, it looks cool. Once this is shaded, it's going to look really neat. And two, there was a young man once who got extremely cross with me when I painted Soviet motor rifles with Bakelite magazines. He called me very unkind things. So, buddy, this is for you. Now, for the hoses and respirators on the faceplate masks, what I've got is Storm Vermin Fur. I want a slightly rubberized finish to these. Could leave them black, but I think this is going to look just a little more interesting. And then I've got Lead Belcher. I'm going to apply this over, funnily enough, any of the big chunky metallic bits like these chains. I'm also going to swap to a smaller brush, and I will use that to paint in the rims on the eye goggles. Now at this stage, if you want to go around and do any tidy up, you know, there's any details that you missed or you just, you've splashed over something, you can fix those up now. But I suggest for the most part, you're probably not going to need to. We are being quite messy deliberately, but we will still apply it fairly generously. Really chuck it in there and make sure that you're working it into the recesses. And I'm going to apply this over all the models and then we'll leave them somewhere nice and warm to dry. Give that about half an hour, in the sun, hopefully. We'll see if the sun cooperates. <laughs> and then, as if by magic, your miniatures will come together. And suddenly, that tyrant skull doesn't look so out of place on everything. It's still a little yellowish, but I do want that look overall, because what I'm getting is guys that look like they've been out in the field, collected a bit of dirt. It's so simple. Now, the cool thing about this too is that there are lots of little details on these miniatures where if you want to spend a bit of extra time, you can. Things like the patches, um, armor plates and stuff like that. You can touch them up with a little bit of extra color if you do fancy. But I think for the purposes of just getting sinister looking dudes on the table really quick, that works for me. But there is one last stage that I do want to do with these. And that'll be to get a tiny bit of Necron compound on one of my little cheap brushes from the stationery aisle. Take some more paint off, actually. And start dry brushing just along the edges of the weapons, just enough to make them pop a bit. Now, once I'm finished with this, what I'm going to do is nothing else. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pop a base on them. And as always, I'll pop the recipe for that in the description. And I'm going to hit them with a matte varnish as well. So let's get a look at what all of these fellas look like once they're all done. And there at last, my stalker team is complete. Now from start to finish, these guys took about two hours. And that's including drying times. I even snuck off to get a little bit of lunch in between at one point while the Agrax Earthshade was drying. So this is a pretty swift way of getting models on the table. 
Now from here, of course, you can take them a little bit further. And I have done a video on actually painting post-apocalyptic survivors before, which I'll link to in the description if you want some ideas on how you can touch these guys up and make them look a little nicer. But for the purposes of a two hour painting session that's ended in four grimy looking miniatures, yeah, why not? I'm, I'm quite happy with that result. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support lets me carry on doing this stuff. Any questions or anything, feel free, drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.